Hi, I'm Santina Muha, and this is Christina Shepard. You're watching EndeavorFreedom.tv. We're here in Orlando, Florida with Eric Robinson, the founder, creator, and president of the Extremity Games. Tell us a little bit about what's going on here for the next few days. Well, the Extremity Games is the first ever disabled competition that has extreme sports in it. This is extreme sports like the motocross, the surfing, wakeboarding, skateboarding, kayaking. It's, uh, it's amazing and it's the first time it's ever been done. This is the second year but it's the first event that's ever been organized for extreme sports or action sports for people living with disabilities. Wow. So tell us a little bit about the events that have gone on already today. Well, we just came back from the motocross event and we had two different levels. There's a, they call it a motocross premiere and light. So there's a little slower bikes and a little faster bikes, but they all go very fast out on the dirt. And uh, it was a supercross style where they all line up on a gate and they all race toward the, the dirt track and they race around the dirt track a number of times and the winner crosses the finish line first. And it was just absolutely incredible. Uh, there, are, there was an individual out there from Belgium he flew in from Belgium, borrowed a bike here. He's missing his arm right at the shoulder. He has no arm at all. Mm -hmm. And he rides with one arm. And he races and jumps. He was jumping at least 40 feet from wow. end to end. It was incredible. So when you see that sort of determination and drive, you really, as, a, as an able-bodied individual, mm -hmm. you got to cut out all the excuses. I yeah. mean, I can't even imagine doing what he does. And, and I got all my parts. <laughs> Is there any other events that's going to be going on tonight and what's looking out for tomorrow? Excellent. Well, tonight we decided that the only way we could do surfing and control the environment is to do it in a place where we can control the environment. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> and Typhoon Lagoon that uh, Walt Disney has on property, they have decided to let us borrow their facility for an evening. So when the park closes at 6.30, we get in there at 8 o'clock we can do our event and we have until midnight to get out. So we've got about 15 people that are going to show up. Two people from Brazil showed up. Um, and then some people from California, Portland, Oregon, two people from Florida. They're from all over the country, all over the world now. And this has now become an international event. And they're all participating in the, in the surfing tonight for cash and prizes. We are able to get donations for, for prizes, surfboards and attire and you name it mm -hmm. they're, they've got a lot of stuff coming and um, I think first place wins 1500 and and 500 and 250 I think it, there's cash prizes for this so this is actually the first event that's ever been created where cash money is given in a, in a disabled event this is a real deal and the the uh, ESPN X Games has some people here that are observing what we're doing and I think they're very interested in what we've got going uh, we went and observed their games in the winter so tomorrow what's on tap, we have first of all uh, wakeboarding and skateboarding that will take place. Then there's recreational um, rock climbing. Uh, we have a BMX bike and a mountain bike competition that are all scheduled to be pretty much in the same spot. And um, we also have an advanced rock climbing that's going to take place. There's two types. There's going to be bouldering and then top rope climbing. So this will be, there's an advanced that's going to be happening off-site and then all the recreational style will be for the on-site. So you'll be able to see that on-site on live. That sounds, that sounds so exciting and congratulations. Thank um, you. About how many athletes are here this year and um, do they compete in various events or is everybody in just a single event? That's good. Well, as of yesterday, we had 120 people registered, pre-registered. Wow. And we always get, like last year, we've got 35 people that walked on site and said they wanted to compete. So we were expecting probably 30 to 50 people again. So now we're looking at about 150 people that are going to be competing. And I know of probably at least 60% of them are competing in two events. So, and there's two people that are competing in three events. And they can only do that because they competed in motocross, and then they're competing in surfing and rock climbing. Mm -hmm. So they're, they have to be spread out. They can't do the concurrent. Like they can't wakeboard and skateboard because that's going out at the same time. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, that's, it's, there, there's some real good athletes out there that are uh, living with dis disabilities. So that's a lot of people here. And this is only the second year of these extremity games? Yes. How did you create such a buzz so quickly? I tell you, it's difficult, but 
there are different magazines out there that are for people with li living with disabilities mm -hmm. uh, where they sort of search things out but it, believe it or not the website was probably our biggest hit right we were able to use a myspace account we were able to generate a lot of interest from people all over the world we actually approached bethany hamilton and asked her to come into the surf competition and she's so busy she, mm -hmm. she, she wasn't able to make it, but there's a number of uh, very high profile individuals that helped us spread the word. Uh, within our own industry, we were able to get to the people that make prosthetic limbs and right. say to them, look, talk to your patients, get them excited about coming down. We've even gotten some people to sponsor their customers mm -hmm. to come down and compete in these games. As well, we attended a number of disability conferences. There was one in Philadelphia we went to. Uh, we also had, we partnered with the Disabled Sports USA group, mm -hmm. uh, got them to help us spread the word through emails and uh, different events where we could pass out the brochures and literature. We did mailings. We spent an enormous amount of money. Um, <laughs> the games cost about $500,000 last year to put on. And College Park fronted the entire bill. Wow. This year, we were able to raise about half of that money and be able to put the games on again, but again, it came out of our pocket. The other half came out of our pocket, and that's okay. We, we're glad to do it. We're happy to be here, and we think that all it's going to take now is for one giant company to come in and say, we like this, and we want to sponsor it. So we're looking for our Nike or, <laughs> yeah. or our Red Bull or who knows what. <laughs> so are there any repeat competitors from last year? Absolutely. A absolutely repeat competitors. Um, they are so excited about these games because there's never been something put together for them. Right. I was standing around the a group of uh, the motocrossers after the race was done, and they're all standing there, and one guy looks over and he says, you know, when I look around, I'm looking at people that look just like me. And he says, I have to compete in events where I'm the only guy living with a disability. I'm the only guy without a leg, or I'm the only guy without an arm, mm -hmm. but not, no, not anymore. Now you have the opportunity to come to a competition where somebody is looking very similar to you and you're competing <laughs> against them and, and you feel that it's a lot more fair. Yeah, you same feel that, playing field. Yeah, yeah, because there is a real disadvantage in some cases with, yeah. like I said, the guy with the arm. I don't even know how he does it. That's a huge thing to overcome. Or even maybe sometimes an unfair advantage that they wouldn't want. Exactly. You know? Like, right. I don't know how they do it. Bonus points or something, I don't know how. Right. But that's also, that's not something they would want. So this is great. Same playing field. Yeah. In fact, the owners of the track said that they want a picture of this guy jumping real high in the air so they can blow it up like a poster and anytime anybody complains about their bike or their body or this that they hurt themselves That's they're going to point right. to the poster and say yeah just try and do what he does yeah. there you go no excuses that's right no excuses that's right so tell me a little bit about your slogan <laughs> there is no replacement for the competitive spirit is our slogan okay the reason we came up with that is because you can brace a limb you can replace a limb but you cannot replace the competitive spirit. And we feel everybody brought that to the games last year, and now it's just building right now. You can see the spirit, the drive, determination, the love for their sport coming out. It's yeah. incredible to sit there and watch. And it's, it's motivating. It gets me out and does, I do more extreme sports now than I ever did. Yeah. So are there a lot of spectators, family, friends, people coming out just to watch the show? Have you generated enough buzz for that yet? Yes, absolutely. In fact, we got with the uh, Central Florida, um, I think it's the tourism, uh, tourism Department or something like uh -huh. that, and we asked them to please spread the word locally. And obviously, if somebody's coming from, say, Washington, D.C. or somewhere, and they want to be in a surf competition or a motocross, they're going to want to have friends there. They're going to want to have their family there. Right. So, yes, there has been a lot of uh, buzz created for creating the, the spectators. And it's free. We're not charging anybody for anything. We're bringing in fun, jumpy toys for the kids and bouncy things and you name it. We've, we've got very good things lined up for the family. And also, um, we've brought in some food, good vending, and uh, some really good stuff that's coming this year, some barbecued stuff, and it'll be a lot of fun. So we really made it family-oriented and spectator-friendly. And uh -huh. there's a lot of places to go and get water. That's all provided. Uh, there's a lot of goodies that you can be uh, partaking in. So. Should have some fun. This is Christina and Santina, and we're out in DevilFreedom.tv. Thanks for watching.